All right, welcome back to the studio. My name is Ken Yaris, and I've got a new easel to open up and show to you guys. It's a classic, been around since the 80s. Let's check it out. It's springtime in Montana, and I'm excited to get the Open Box M out and put it through its paces. So let's get this thing unboxed. They say never cut towards yourself. Here it is. Okay, so it looks well packaged. It's got some bubble wrap around it. My order summary, it still smells like shellac. These are handmade in Cody, Wyoming, which I love. This is an American made product. I hate to say it because that kind of dates me because uh, this is a classic back to 1989, much like me, uh, making this thing 32 years old at the time of filming. These are all panel extenders. Now, this is the one that goes on the front of the easel, I believe. These two go on the side. I misread the website and ordered an extra one of these. The easel allegedly comes with uh, one side. So I'm gonna have an extra one to play around with and potentially drill holes in because that's my favorite thing to do with these. Um, let's open this last side. Here it is. This out of the way. The Open Box M. One of the sayings I like is if it's not broken, don't fix it. This is a testament to that. It's got the basic tripod mount on the bottom here. Looks like a nice brass hardware. It's got a cool, classy, timeless look with these legs. These are what attach our side panels and it, give it gives it something to kind of stable to stand on, which is cool. These are a part of what holds the panels in as you're painting. They extend and are adjustable. I purchased the eight x 10 version because hiking mobility is a part of my artistic process. Uh, if you're more of a car painter, they make three sizes larger, which can accommodate a much larger size panel. This one I believe goes out to about 15 inches. So my largest plein air size is normally 11 by 14. This is, works great. So as you can see, it doesn't have a glass palette. They have different levels of protection for this, you know, kind of a birch plywood underneath. Yeah, ultimately this will be covered in glass and then I can easily clean it like I went over in my other easel review. I think it's important for uh, the painting process. Clean palette, clean mind. Back to the backside here, there's a clip that's holding in these side panels, which will fit both of my little ones. This larger panel, I think I'll have to just nest in some other way uh, as I'm storing this for hiking. There's a lot of this little hardware on the side that uh, you know might catch on my hiking gear. I'm a, little, uh, I'm a little worried about that in regards to this thing's portability, but the size and weight are right on the money. It is advertised at a pound and a half, but we're gonna pull the scale out and check that. One pound, 15 ounces. So a little heavier than a pound and a half, but still pretty light. And if I'm gonna throw this on there, two pounds, one ounce with this bad boy, two pounds, six ounces. And if I throw the glass pallet in, we're gonna be a lot heavier than that. So since I don't have the glass cut yet, which they recommend against, uh, they said it's best to get the, the pallet yourself, measure it, and then get the glass because they could be a little off. These are handmade after all. A very popular thing in most easels now is what's called a tension hinge. And it goes against this backside and it's usually black or silver and it's got a adjustable tightness um, that keeps it from opening all the way and collapsing in wind. This just has free hinges. Well, wow, that's really noisy. You use these locking mechanisms to hold it down. I should, I should read the instructions. It's the step, step two, I believe. Little notes of classiness is this cute brass clamp. I mean, they love brass at this company and it looks really timeless, really cool. Attention to detail is really great. Um, and I guess on another side point, the craftsmanship feels really strong. Um, I don't think the easel's going anywhere. Okay, step two, never use pliers. I see, so the piece that is important if you're attaching these bottom panels is to move this slider all the way back. So this is giving it the most strength and structure by pushing that back all the way. These little thumb twists re-clamp. 
These have grooves on both sides, so they're interchangeable. Whatever side you really wanted to put it on, you can do it that way. Now, because these are screws mounted in the bottom, you can't lose this little thumb spinner, which I think is a nice touch because I would easily have those fall off in my backpack or somewhere out in the woods with the amount of friction and movement that they go through. It's a little finicky, but you can get these thumb screws all the way out and attach the front panel and you get just a couple threads left to tighten it back up again. Made some creaky wood noises, but it seems pretty strong. So with the pallet extenders, you're given this lot of extra room to work. And for me, it means valuable places to clip paper towels, that little pill box you'll see me paint with occasionally. Uh, my brushes and things like that can lay against this and stand up. I'm a little worried about there not being a side piece here. Um, I get that it's more interchangeable this way, but my brushes might blow off the side of this. Uh, so we'll see how that annoys me or not. Again, I'm worried about all the brass hardware be able to come off. Hopefully I don't lose anything. If not, I might order some replacement parts. On that note, another great thing about this proud American company is that they totally stand by their products. They'll do refurbishments, repairs, any kind of damages this thing incurs, they'll cover and repair. So I think it's for a small fee, but that's a pretty great thing to mean that they stand by their product through and through. All right, I got one of the planar panels that I usually use. It's made out of aluminum. I make these myself and I'll do another video sometime talking about that process. Anyway, these work by clamping together. You could fit a canvas in it. These have got pretty big teeth that come out, but it'll clamp it together. Now you wanna kind of measure and see, this will, this will work, the tightness there, but you loosen the wing nuts on the back to accommodate the certain sizes. So you can see this spring mechanism holds a lot of tension and it's pinching that panel and holding it in place. And that should help keep the wind from grabbing it and taking it away from you. And again, the eight by 10 will hold out to 15 and a half inches. So these are pretty expandable in this direction. And then upwards, you can go as high as you want. Uh, as, as strong as these arms are really to hold up, uh, I think it's got its limitations, but it really looks like it'll be pretty capable for my plein air needs. Check out those other sizes if you need something bigger. All right, so that concludes part one of my review of the Openbox M. This is a classic easel designed in the 80s and still holding true, still made in America. I'm excited to put it through a week of trials and I'll check back in with part two. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. See ya.